We are backstage here at Historic Washington Hall for the debut of Man Like Doris here on uh, The Defiant Ones, man making his Seattle debut for Defy. He's wrestled for Defy at a WrestleMania weekend, man. And uh, Man Like Doris, welcome to Defiant Ones. Welcome to Defy, man. How you doing? What's up, bro? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Doing good, man. It's good okay. to have you here. You just finished up your first match in Washington Hall, so I got to get the quick, instant reaction. What'd you think, man? What I think... Unbelievable, incredible. The crowd were loud. Like the place was booming throughout. I loved it. Hopefully I get to come back at some point. Absolutely, man. We would love I mean, you heard the fans. They were chanting, yeah, Well, man. please Absolutely. come back. Please I, come I'd back. Love to. I'd love to come back. Yeah. It's, a long, it's a long journey. Absolutely. So this is, I think, your only United States date on your little tour, right? Yeah, You're... this time, yeah. I'm just coming just for the fire. That's back amazing. Out tomorrow. Awesome, man. Well, I want the whole story, man. So tell me, uh, you know, w what got you into wrestling as a kid? Were you a fan? Um, yeah, so when I was a kid, um, in England, or the UK, yeah. you, you like, like to call it, but you like, it sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> but um, in England, it only had like WWE on like the su subscription channels. Yeah. But I didn't have the subscription channels. We had the free to free view. Yeah. And we had TNA. Okay. So... Me and I found out a lot of other people in wrestling just watch TNA, used to watch it with like AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, yeah. Consequences of Creed, Machine Guns, um, Beer Money, all of those a lot. So that's my era. Okay. Wrestling. Nice. Who were your, uh, you know, what, what kind of drew you into it? Was it, who was your first favorite? Was it AJ Styles? The two favorites, Consequences Creed. Okay. AJ Styles. Xavier Woods, obviously. Yeah. Mm. They, they were my two favorites. Maybe Creed. To be honest. Yeah. But then but AJ just had unbelievable matches as well. Okay. Awesome. And as a kid, were you did you like collect the toys? Did you play the video games or I say I played more video games than collect the toys. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I play like two K, um, like twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. When I started watching WWE. And then like TNA game. Everyone likes to say it's rubbish and blah blah blah, but I was like, I loved it. I thought it was perfect. Yeah. Mm. So it's kinda cool that TNA's back to being TNA, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's wicked. Like, um, it's a very big thing. It has a very, um, like, prominent, what's what I'm looking for? Like, influence on the modern wrestling scene. Oh, yeah. So it's great to have that back and see people who used to be there back in the day and new um, people coming up. Like yeah. my tag partner, Leon Slater. Yeah. It right now. Yeah. So you, um, you know, so in England, uh, TNA did some big shows. They did some really big shows, uh, you know, up to 10 years ago or so. Did you ever get to go to any uh, of the no, live? I would never okay. able to go, unfortunately. Well, hopefully one day I'll get to go to yeah, a TNA exactly. show. Maybe yeah, exactly. Maybe as a, as a wrestler. Who maybe, knows? Maybe. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, starting wrestling. Um, were you pretty set on the fact that you wanted to actually do wrestle or you know what got you into actually doing it yeah, I, never, I never knew you could be a wrestler to be honest okay i never knew indie wrestling existed yeah i just my mate invited me to so i stopped wrestling for a bit okay as you like watching wrestling or anything then he randomly invited me to nxt in london oh wow um the takeover and i knew like samoa joe yeah I, everyone who was in tna on that card and i was like yeah. oh shit maybe i mean i swear yeah, it's all good. good. Yeah. <laughs> That's my first one. I was doing really well until then. But anyway, um, do you want to come down? And I was like, yeah, may as well. But he was at university then as well and lived in the area. So I went down to that and I was like, damn, always wanted to try wrestling. Yeah. So then I went back to Birmingham, which is the 0121, the area code. Yeah. And I Googled wrestling in Birmingham. And 10 minutes walk away was Kamikaze Pro, yeah. which is my first training school. Wow, okay, cool. And what year was this that you... Uh, this was 2016. 2016? No, very start of 2016, because I think TakeOver was end of 2015. Okay. Uh, and so, you know, did you take to it? Were you ha First off, were you an athlete before that? Or? I've been playing football, which you, call, you guys call soccer. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> well, 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 yeah, I used to play football. Yes. Like, throughout... Well, everyone does, well, not everyone. I must say, like, 80% of boys are going to play football. Sure. And I played football until, like, <clears throat> soccer to under 18s <laughs> and like Worcester City yeah. which is like a pretty decent level and that when I turned 18 then I was just like um, maybe I should try some cows now and then then I started wrestling 
That's awesome. Did you did you take to it pretty fast, or was it was it difficult for you to kind of get your grip on it? I feel like athletically, like I could do roles and stuff, but in terms of learning wrestling, I feel like it's a very complex sport, art, drama, whatever you want to call it. There's lots of different opinions. People like things in certain ways. People hate this that kind of wrestling, but then they love that kind of wrestling. Like it's it's not as simple as black and white. So mm-hmm. I feel like some aspects are took to pretty well and others had to do over and over and over, speak to people, speak to more experienced experienced people to get better at. Okay. So you you are uh, prominently featured in Progress. Uh, is that the first company you started working for, or who did you oh, start nah, wrestling Progress. for? Progress. I wish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Now nah, Progress is one of the top countries in Europe and has been for yeah. a while. So absolutely, you have to work, make your all, way up, yeah, yeah, to get to Progress. Really. So I, my first promotion I wrestled for was Kamikaze Pro okay. Training School. Yeah. Um. And then my second match was for Grapple, which is a... So when I went to university, yeah. um, I went to a training school in Leeds, which is right by Huddersfield. Train trained there, and then that was my second second or third match, then Kamikaze. Then I started wrestling in like the middle area of England, the Midlands, and like some of the northern scene. Okay. Like Tidal Wrestling, um, Nothing But Wrestling, <laughs> Hard Type Corey. Yeah. Yeah, he's a, a, a nutcase. Um, but yeah, just like Rise Wrestling, Attack Pro Wrestling, I think. That's where I really started. Attack. I think that was where I started doing all these few promotions, but then Attack was where I really started to get like my name yeah. out there. And then I started doing Defiant, um, which used to be What Culture Pro. Sure. But yeah, I did Defiant for a bit. I did their last ever show. But yeah, I think that was... They, I think, yeah, Defiant and Attack were the main two promotions. Cool. Like, pre- Lockdown era. Okay. And then lockdown, that's when progress messaged me. Like, fucking the world's got to shit now. (laughs) Yeah, let's get things going. (laughs) We need someone to be available for you. So, you know, now's the time to shout out some of the people that made an impact on your early career. Who are some people that helped lift you up and really start? Are we talking like pre-pandemic? Yeah, just however, you know, maybe just some people who have helped you out along the way. I shout out my tag partner, Dan Maloney. We've spent a lot of time together. Not always best friends. Sure. But I feel like maybe one of the closest things in wrestling to a brother, I guess. Um, Trent Seven. Yeah. Trent Seven. Absolute man. Honestly, yeah. you do not understand. He's a legend. You need to go on a night out with Trent Seven, for sure. Millie McKenzie. You said I need to go on a night yes. out with Everyone him? Everyone okay. Trent okay. Seven. Can you describe what a typical night out with... Or you there's, can't there's really no talk about it. as a typical night out okay. with Trent Seven. Okay. And I definitely can't talk about it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> um, I'd say like Millie McKenzie, Omari, Lee, the Hunter Brothers, they're legends in the UK. So I feel like that group is where I learned to train and wrestle. We used to train together for like me, Omari, Dan... Millie is a couple years younger, but like same age. Then we've got like Lee Hunter, Jim Hunter. Okay. I had teachers wrestling. Um, and then when you think about, I'm going to see so many people to miss out. Yeah. Recently, I have to say Rockstar Sport, Drake Maverick. Yes. Now. Yes. He's helped me out loads. That's cool. Like a whole, I stayed with him for a couple of weeks last year. Cool. And then ever since then, um, I've just applied things that he taught me. That's great. And told me that I could do to improve. And it's, Everything's just worked. Big Damer. Yeah. I could sit here all day, really. Progress Big Damer, Tag Team Champion. Big Damer is also the man. He's a scary man as yeah, well. Yeah. I've never been on the wrong side of him, but I never want to be. He seems like he'd be a fun guy to go out drinking with. Yeah. I watched the uh, yeah, Euros, the yeah. Cup Final with him um, the other day, and he's Irish, so yep. they don't like English people. Fair enough. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was great. Good fun. Well, there's, there's a whole host of people I'm definitely missing. But they well, you shouted out a bunch of them, man. Yeah. Uh, so another part of, you know... Oh, sorry. Leon Slater. There we go. Current <laughs> so tag team champion. He's, or current tag team partner. He's, yep. he's, yeah, Leon's the man. But like, it speaks for itself. Yeah. Young, polite, super talented, super athletic. Like, has everything. But yeah, that's the last one. 
Until I sprinkle someone else. So another thing that you're well known for is rapping your way to the ring. Mm -hmm. You know, you're also a musician as well as, you know, a wrestler. So tell me about when hip hop and when music kind of came into your life. Um, it's hard to pinpoint a moment, but as, as long as I can remember, really. Like, it wasn't really... I remember listening to R&B first, because that's what my mum would play. Yeah. So I know, like, all Destiny's Child. Yeah. All their, I know all the songs. It's quite embarrassing sometimes when it comes on in the club. I know it. Yeah. And, uh, TLC, like, Mary J. Blige, um, all, all, everyone. Yeah. Aretha Franklin. And then, but I just knew I, I loved the music. Yeah. That's like soul, but I didn't even realise that's what I was listening to. I'm just, that's just what's on. Yeah. And then when I got to about year five, year six, I don't know if that's the same as grade five. I don't know. But that's I, like yeah, just before idea. secondary school, which I think is high school. Yes. Um. Then I found out about grime music. Yeah. Which is like, it's like a subculture. Mm-hmm. And then, would you call like Central C? Would he be grime? Oh, no, he's not grime. It's okay. like, it's, it's all comes to like, it came from like jungle, um, ragga, reggae, turning to like its own genre, which yeah. is called, well, it turned into jungle music. Okay. Which jungle kind of turned into like grime. Sure. And then grime turned into like drill, trap. It just has evolved. Dizzy Rascal? Dizzy Rascal, grime, grime okay. jungle. I'd okay. Say. Um, garage music so garage as well in like jungle like that sort of just before grime yeah but yeah this is grime for sure and they very mainstream yeah eventually. sure well yeah it, it, um, his album um, Boy in the Corner was like one of the most influential albums sure of like the modern era I guess I mean, one of the names that I mentioned, Central C and, and Dave, are, are huge right now. Mm. Uh, are you into, you know, Briti uh, British and, and, and English hip hop? Uh, or, you know, are you more inspired by, like, stuff that's happening in the States or worldwide? What, what uh, are you d digging right now? No, nah, very, very British, man. Okay. Like, I do love, um, like, J. Cole. You sure? I've seen him so many times. Really? Yeah, I almost died once at a concert. Wow. It's just crazy. I seen J Cole. He's he was my favorite for ages, and mm -hmm. it's like I didn't understand Kendrick for a long time. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, now I get Kendrick. Sure, but I don't know if it's just because I'm older, more mature, maybe. Okay, but um, but yeah, mainly UK artists like I like Boy Better Know, Skepta, Wiley, Frisco, Maximum. Okay, see, I named um, the mainstream ones that you know. Yeah, I mean, well, but... Skepta's Skepta come over here a couple of times. He's done some tunes with ASAP Rocky. Okay, and stuff like that, but. I think I'd say the most famous ones like Skepta, Jamie, Getz, Kana, um, and then they they really started making like grime music, yeah. I think in the UK, and then that's when it started to come over. And the Stormzy as well. I don't know if you heard of Stormzy. Started to come over to America a little bit, but I feel like they created a pathway for people like Central C mm -hmm. and Dave to really make a name for themselves because they gave them a sprinkle, but it was very hard. Because they were like the first ones to do it, and but Central C like he's been killing it. I'm gonna TikTok as well. Yeah, factor TikTok wasn't around when he did that on the radar was, with Drake. Oh, was, you know, and ones. that that kind of blew yeah. Central C up too. So I'm gonna show my ignorance and ask. Uh, you know, UK uh, is UK drill still a, a big thing? UK drill music? Not not what it was one once was. Okay. I've seen everybody live as well. Okay. I've seen everybody live. And so Section Boys, they were big. And then, I don't know what, they kind of fell off. And sure. this, that, and the other happened. I didn't want to delve into it too much. But sure. Yeah, they're, they're, not, they're not what they once were. But they were great. I used to love Section Boys. All right. Your top three UK hip hop artists of all time, your favorites. But hip hop and grime are different. In okay. The UK. Right. So, like, I say Dave is a hip hop. Like okay. UK, UK rap and gigs there, like UK rappers. Okay. But then we have like grime. It's, it's very like complex. What like are you? Well, everyone calls me a rapper. Okay. But I'm technically not a rapper. I'm okay. an MC. Okay. But I just I just have to get, go with it because it's obviously easily translatable to an American audience or well, everyone in general, really. So I'll just say, yeah, I'm a rapper. But, Do you have any albums we could check out? Any? any uh... No, so like. There's three stars on YouTube, but I just don't go digging in. Okay. <laughs> okay. Fair <laughs> don't enough. Go but, you know, I've been doing music way longer than I've been wrestling, really. Yeah. 
And that's it. You can just do that at home. Yeah. We'd just, we'd just go to school. We'd write some bars and then we'd clash each other. We'd just like rap battling each other. Yeah. And we'd just say the most vile things to each other. Sure. And it'd just be hilarious. Yeah. And then, then we'd just spit verses on beats. But we say my top three MC or artists. We say artists. Sure. Skepta's number one. Okay. Like I've been listening to him for so, so long. Number two, a guy called Getz. Getz? He's like Kendrick. I never understood him for a long time. Okay. It's like he spits too fast. I don't get him. He's, um, I just didn't understand. But then I don't know what happens. Suddenly one day he hears something and it just clicks. And then you start understanding like the lyrics. I just think it is comes with age. Yeah. So yeah, Getz is great. It comes with the wisdom. Maybe. He's yeah. got an album called Conflict of Interest, which okay. is an unbelievable album. Nice. And third, yeah, that that changes every every month. That okay. does. I'd say at the moment it's Dizzy Rascal, but that's just because he's dropped an album. Sure. Yeah. But sometimes it's JME. Um. Yeah. Frisco, this guy could Frisco has been killing it as okay. well. He's in Boy Better Know as well. I'm gonna be looking oh, at these. This guy up. called Chipmunk as well. So Chipmunk. Like, like, okay. Third interchanges depending on their they feeling. But okay. And the fly, I was listening to Dizzy a lot, so I think. I mean, this has inspired me a lot, actually. In really? terms of wrestling, yeah. this is like, he's a gimmick, he is. Okay. If he was in WWE, he'd be a champion, like Logan Paul, but he's just a character. So, okay. yeah, I'll say Dizzy third. So, I'm, I'm a fan of the show, but I got to know, is it cringe that I'm a big fan of Top Boy? Is that is that cringy? Not cringe. Is that, okay, okay. Is <laughs> that cringe? I think it's good. Okay, you like that show? Yeah, yeah, it's good. Okay. It's top, top Boy's good. I like Top Boy. Okay, boys. all right. So it's a, it's okay representation. I'm not from London. I'm from Birmingham, though. So sure. Them boys, like, do a bit differently. But Top Boy's good. Good representation. I think Kano, um, you know, Sully. Yes. Yes, yeah. uh, it's a grime MC. Kano, oh, really? You know? okay. He'd be top 10, for sure. Okay, Kano. nice, dude. But yeah, he's, and uh, um, the Shane, he's also in really? Sully Crew. Oh, okay. So they're both musicians who've just tran- transferred over. And... Um, Sully's girlfriend, I can't remember her name, is Little Sims, who's also a rapper. Uh-huh. Um, so it's just it's just so real, the show. That's okay. what I like about it. Okay. But, yeah, no, yeah a, I knew that. Yeah, so, I totally knew that yeah, the whole time. <laughs> it's a great show. <laughs> the end, have you seen the finish? Yeah. Crazy. I don't want to yeah. spoil it. Oh, my gosh, downstairs. They're, they're talking about, sorry to change the subject, they're yeah. talking about Deadpool and Wolverine, and oh. they're talking about spoilers for you, man. That's not cool, man. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. That's not <laughs> well, yeah, cool. I don't want to spoil it for the people, but yeah, ending was crazy. But yeah, no, it's good. It's good because it's relatable. I feel like I grew yeah. up watching a lot of American TV shows, mm-hmm. so it's always a bit different. Like I love Power. It's in Power. Oh yeah, Power's crazy. When I did LA last year, I had Big Rich Town on my, on my headphone. Okay, time. I thought, yeah, oh, I'm going in, I'm yeah. Going in now. yeah. But yeah, but Top Boy's great. Nice. Should, everyone should watch Top Boy. All right, man. So, um, you know, next couple of years, what are you looking to do in your uh, wrestling career? Just be the best wrestler I can be. And also experience great shows, great crowds. I've been to America so many times this year. I've been to so many states. That's awesome. Um, it's just fun. I love food over here. There we go. What, so do, you, what, what do you like eat to eat when you get over here? <sighs> man, it's so bad. Everything. I like Jack in the Box. Okay. I like Waffle House. Um, what else is good? I, like, I had Dennis this morning. Okay. Um, I'm a fat bastard. Oh, there we go. I like that. I, was, I do like cheesesteaks. Okay. Ins- yeah, um, Philly cheesesteaks. Mm. Yeah. That must have been fun in Philadelphia, man. Being, yeah, being, that's the first time I had yeah. one. I love the big slushies you got. Oh, yeah. In the petrol stations. Yeah, 7 Eleven. Gas yeah, station. Yeah, 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 gas station. <laughs> <laughs> um, and is that like, your, is like that your American accent? Gas cent. station. Gas station, man. Fucking hell, man. <laughs> God damn. Well, we, we we welcome you back here, man. And um, you know, w- w- thoughts on you know now that Defy and Progress are in a partnership under one banner. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's wicked. I think hopefully there's a lot more back and forth. Yeah, over between the two promotions. Um, surely, I'm just speculating, but surely there's a joint show on the cards. It would make sense. Yeah. It could be a Defy versus Progress. It'd make a lot of sense. Absolutely. So, I'm sure it's been talked about, and yeah. it's probably a spoiler now. Like yeah. that Deadpool Wolverine <laughs> spoiler. Oh man, I'm gonna go downstairs. Bang. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. 
All right, man. My last question for you, bro. Um, pick a scar on your body. It doesn't have to be wrestling related at all. Pick a scar on your body. Show us if you can the scar, but at least tell us the story of how you got a scar. I got, I got two. Okay. I got, I got one here. It's a big one. You got this. Oh yeah. Yep. I got one on my head. Okay. So do you want both or do you want one? Uh, which one? Whichever one you want to share, man. I don't, I don't mind both of them. Okay. It wasn't, it wasn't like I was fighting a bear or anything. This one was like at school. Okay. And I was the fastest kid in the school. Mm-hmm. All right. And everyone knew I was the fastest. And, but I was in like year nine. So some of the older boys would think, oh, it's not the fastest. Yeah. And then my boy Shakir, I saw him the other week actually. It's so weird. So I bumped into him. But it's like, no, Jerry, she's not the fastest. I'm the fastest. <laughs> I'm like, you're not the fastest. So then we have this playground called the Red Zone yeah. and it's like a football pitch and it's got a, a metal cage around it. And then we went corner to corner. I'm like, let's see. I absolutely smoked him. Smoked him. But then at the end of the fence, there was something, on the mud of the metal bit stuck out and just sliced me open. So wow. I won, but at what cost? At what cost? <laughs> well, he could never say I was faster than me. But you were the fastest? I have that to this day. Nice. And this one was from a wrestling match, man. So annoyed. This one actually annoys me. I have to look okay. at it every day. Why is that? Because I was wrestling, wrestling at Resurgence Wrestling. Shout out Resurgence. They're okay. Cool. Um, wrestling Kanji. She's a great wrestler. That's Bite Chave. Who, was he at the, on the Defy show? Who? The Spike Trevay. He was in Philadelphia. Hmm. Former Progress champion. But it might have been. But yeah, I was wrestling them two in a freeway. Yeah. At Resurgence for the championship. And I won the championship. Yeah. But Spike Trevay threw me into the wall. Oh. And there was blood everywhere. I had to get bandaged. I was watching them in the ring. And I was... Well, I went back in fighting. And, it was, and you won? Won the belt. Oh, there yeah. you go. 450, Spike Trevay. Worth it? Absolutely. Let's see, both of them have came. <laughs> what? Yeah, they came with the win, but it's still, you know, and yeah. it's for you to remember. Man like Doris, uh, thank you so much for taking the time, man. And uh, anything you want to say to the Defiance and the Defy audience? Um, thank you for having me. Big fan of Defy. I've been watching Defy for a long time. That's awesome. Like, I used to always watch it on YouTube. That's great. One of the first indies in America that I ever knew about. That's cool. And how I discovered, I think... Shane Strickland and Leo Russian. Yeah. So. Oh, man. That match is iconic. Mm, so I think that That's was awesome. the f- my first one. So it's great to be here. Right on, man. Thank you very much, bro. Thank you. If you yeah. see some of the matches online, you'll see me copy and stuff. There we go. Okay. All right. So, all right. Yeah. Call him out on well, it. Yeah, it's time. like five, six years ago. I don't nice. know anymore. And that was Man Like Doris here on Defiant Ones.